Hey guys, just want to say welcome to another episode of uh, Tutorials with Tone Shifters. Today I thought I'd uh, go through a project of mine called Scream and Shout. I've just recently released it actually. Yeah, it, it's the, the track is kind of in the same vibe as like Blah Blah or, uh, you know, with the, the side kick and bass and uh, a really catchy vocal and, and, and melody. So yeah, I thought I would just get straight into it and I would uh, show you guys the, the project. Okay, so... Yeah, this is basically the project over here. As you can see, uh, this is kind of the project overview. You can see I like to color code everything, so that way it's kind of easy to navigate throughout the project. Usually my projects get quite messy, but then at the end I like to tidy everything up, remove all the channels that I'm not using, uh, any muted ideas or stuff, just get rid of it. and Because they're still available in the old, old projects. But as you can see here, I've kind of categorized like the synths, the main synths, like the leads are all in yellow, the low, the low end, the bases and stuff, even stuff that are that's still part of the lead is marked as, yeah, this like pinky ready color. Then the screech is marked as green. Then I've got here the kicks and then got some big drums, which is kind of separate uh, because it's like a contact library. And yeah, all these separate little things like the effects kicks and yeah, the percussion claps, you know, snares and uh, effects, kick bombs. And then these are the, the risers and stuff like that. So it's kind of organized pretty neatly in the, in the project. And that way it's really easy to navigate. All right, we might as well start with the, from the top. We can check out the, the vocal. If I make this nice and big so we can all see what's going on. So these vocals are recorded with Insali. Uh, her name is actually uh, Elisa Fidel. And basically the idea was to do something like I was saying before, to do something along the lines of blah, blah, and to, to talk about, you know, how, how we get stuck in work or, you know, whatever we do during the week. And, you know, when it comes to the weekend, it's about having a good time going out to the party or going to the festival and forgetting about everything else. So you find a lot of tracks in Hardstyle have this recurring kind of message. It's very relatable. And that was the kind of the idea behind the, the vocals. So, I mean, the, the vocals are quite simple. We, you can play them uh, soloed. So yeah, basically we just recorded uh, a whole bunch of takes. We wanted to get that kind of chanty kind of style. Uh, so we recorded a whole bunch of takes and then we panned uh, a lot of those takes, you know, some left, some right, you know, some a uh, little, little bit to the left, some a little bit to the right, some a little bit further back in the mix and lowering the formant of the vocal. And then another one, maybe with a little bit higher formant of the vocal. I can show you what the formant actually does if I go into very audio of here by the way for those who don't know what very audio is very audio allows you to tune your vocals it's similar to melodyne but it's the cubase version and they've integrated it into the software so that you can just you know if you have an acapella or if you've recorded your vocal takes you literally just double click the vocal and then it's all there for you you just enable it and then you can play with the the tuning of the vocal so if i show you guys here for example we come So we can raise the formant. So what the formant does is it's got to do with the timbre of the sound. So if you want to keep the same timbre but pitch it up, um, so say I wanted to take this up, I don't know, let's say one semitone, but if I feel like it, if I feel like it sounds too chipmunky, that's because it's, it's shifting the formant up. So then we can shift the formant back down a little bit and then now it sounds really chipmunky that's plus 100 percent now it sounds like it's pitched down low but it's still the same pitch it hasn't changed um from what i've changed it to of course if i go back to the original pitch So yeah, you're basically using the format to create some different textures and create that chanty vibe. And then it's just about mixing them and layering them. I've done this in another project just because it was too messy with all the layers and I didn't want it in the project. So then I just made one vocal file, exported it, put it into this project, and then 
it, it works. The, the first version I did is up here. I can mute this one, um, which was good, but it wasn't as wide or as thick. And if I play it to you, but including this layer, sorry. So, so it sounds good, but it's not kind of 100% there. You can hear it with the next take in this one. It's like way thicker. It's way wider. Sounds like there's a lot more voices, a bit of chorus on there. This this version was the one that we ended up using for the for the track. So yeah, I mean, if I if I was to show you the the rest of it, I mean, the, the whole track is basically built on this this little verse. That's kind of the hook of the track, and then it's just using this hook in different ways. So then we did this little uh, repeating uh, build up here. Basically, all I did there was I, I, I cut up the, the section where she was saying out and duplicated it across just like this. I bounced in place and then I pitch shifted it with, the, with an envelope. Now you say we set it to 12 and then we want it to go up like that. Um, and I think I did that twice. So we'll do that again. And then you can hear the same kind of, it's basically the same thing. And then, yeah, sometimes like it doesn't really make it to the end. So then what I'll do, I'll go back, I'll undo, undo, undo. I'll extend it a little bit further, bounce again, export it and pitch it up until I find that it's, it's just right. As you can hear with the pitch up thing, it's actually, got some effects on there. So what I'll do, I'll show all used automation, minimize this one. And you can see I'm using this plugin called Endless Smile. I, I really love this plugin. Um, this plugin is kind of just a, just a time saver. Before this plugin, I used to do everything manually. So you would automate your delay, you would automate uh, your reverb. Basically what it's doing is it's creating like a more wet signal. And then I'll play it for you so you can hear what's happening. So this was just one knob. The first mode just makes it a lot wetter. Um, if I change the modes, there's some crazy modes like Data Dynamite or Broken Teeth or Smack in the Face and uh, Face Melting Joy. It's just, it's just really hilarious names. What it does is it's a combination of reverbs, delays and filters. And they've also, what I hear is it's got like this, um, it's almost like this synth in the background that's also rising continuously. So. It's like, if I play it. So that's a little bit more extreme than what I had. The one that I had was just more like, was the first mode is more reverb, just making it really wet. But I just love it. This guy gets really excited, as you can see. <laughs> but then, you know, then what I did was, also this low vox thing, and I've been doing this for years now in, my, in all my tone shifters tracks. And basically what it is, is it's it's just the, the vocal. I use very audio to then, I'll, I'll play it, sorry, so you know you know what I'm talking about. Now you could probably do this with a vocoder. You could probably do this with um, something like Vocal Synth 2, or um, yeah, there's so many, there's, well, there's, there's one on the Waves plugins, there's, there's so many different kind of vocoders out there. But personally, what I what I do as, as this typical tone shifters one, I go into Vary Audio and I make the, the see these little boxes, you know, normally if you see them, uh, reset, all changes, new version, that's the original. And what I did, I, I would just grab the whole thing and take it down to the note that I wanted, all on the one note, and then already it's going to sound like a robotic thing. Let me take it back to, to that one. If I take off the processing, it kind of creates this like robotic kind of voice. And this is down like two or three octaves. If I go here and I turn on the sound shifter, it's basically just taking it down 12 semitones. 
that already sounds really, really cool. Um, and then if I open up Trash, it's just a distortion. It's nothing, nothing crazy happening. Just some clipping. And then just compressing that. To be honest, I don't really need to compress that because it's being distorted, but at the time it just, it just worked. And then, yeah, that is being sent to a, uh, actually, no, it's not being sent to a group. I think that's the reverb that's already on there. So all of that is processed. Yeah, so basically the reverb was already on the web file. So, you know, with, I, I didn't need to make it like dry and then put reverb wet. You know, sometimes it's, it's things just work the way they are. And, you know, to go into the, the detail of sitting there and going back into the old project and exporting a version without the reverbs just for this little thing. With this, it just worked and it fit in the mix. But that's kind of how I've used the vocal in different ways to kind of create this track. This low vox thing, this, you know, build up and then just repeating the vocals. We can move on to the leads now. And what you see here is a whole bunch of layers. I like to layer all my leads. Um, you know, what, what I use normally for my leads, you have like the, the, the character of the lead, which is like your saw wave stuff, uh, your distorted leads. And then you have the hypersaw, which we usually do with the virus TI, which is the standard hard style sound. Yeah, what I do with the virus TI, that then supports those character leads. And I can show you all the separate layers now. I mean, for the, for the intro, we just have a simple a virus and then lay it onto that I've got this layer on inspire it's got a bit of portamento on that so it's got this like screamy kind of almost annoying earwormy lead so then I can show you the virus And that's just like a simple lead, just for the intro, because it needs to kind of stay open. And also for the side bass, the side bass is, you know, if you put a really thick lead on top of the side bass, it kind of wasn't working. So I had to keep the lead simple and easy to follow in the beginning and together. I mute it, bring it back in. So that's the first intro lead. Then we've got the main leads, which come in here. And these consist also two virus layers, one I've already exported here just because uh, the virus can be temperamental. And this is the other layer. Which is this one here. As you can see, it's just a hypersaw layer with a classic, you know, saw wave there with some detuning and it's down the octave and you've got some stuff happening here with the LFOs. So these two hypersaw layers are what supports the leads now. That's the other layer. As you can hear, this hypersaw layer is just, you know, the one octave. And this one has two octaves in it. You've got, you know, the low octave and the high octave. This also is kind of like a hypersory layer that I've done in Dune. For anybody that doesn't use Dune, it's a, it's, it's actually pretty good for, for these kind of leads. It's nowhere near the virus, but it's the, the leads are, are really good. And together, laid in, in between everything, it just uh, makes it really full. Also, because the virus is quite temperamental to do the hypersaws. Sometimes you can only have one or two layers in the virus with the hypersaw, and then it's already like, you know, gone crazy, or you have to reset it, or, you know, turn it on, turn it back off, because the note's getting shortened, or there's so many little glitches and errors with the virus that I hate, but we use it because it's, it's got the sound. Then we've got, these are kind of some virus emulation chords. That's also done in Spire. Then I've got these ARPs. Now the ARP with the melody is a little bit different to the ARP I have in the break. And, 
and why because i found it it was a little bit distracting um a little bit distracting when the melody came in so i did a little bit the up was a little bit different here more simple without the top melodies and then these are some spire chords again And then that laid together with the melody supports the, the lead. Um, and then this is my power of emotion lead, which is the main character of the whole leads. So this together with the spire chords and then together with the virus hypersaws, it gives you kind of, and the dune layer, sorry. So they're basically the leads, and I mean together, they sound. Oh, put everything together now. And now, if I move over here, you can see there's some extra lead layers, and these are just harmonies. So this one is using the same power of emotion lead, but uh, it's doing a harmony. And then this one is using the same lead as this, these chords. But in the high octave, and it's doing another harmony. So together, if we listen to all the leads now, Yeah, that's basically the leads. And then on top of the leads, what I like to do is have these like side-chained virus sounding chords in the background. What that does, it adds a bit of shimmer into the, on the drop or, I mean, I don't think I used it in the, in the builds. No, I didn't just on the drops and that just creates this extra shimmering when when the drop comes and then it fills up the the spectrum a little bit so it's not doesn't feel like there's gaps or it's empty um and it makes it sound more full um then you know together with the with the leads you need to combine the low the bottom notes the bass notes which is what i've done here with these three layers if I mute it now, you can see the leads are great, but you need those low layers to really move it along and push it. It adds a lot of energy. And I can go through them one by one. This one is it's just like a low stab, really simple. And this is the high pass lace. Uh, high past low bass it's like a plucky kind of uh, bass so I just wanted to get rid of the lows and I just wanted the pluck so then to layer onto this one so now it sounds like one thing and it's like a pluck but really they're two separate sounds and then this one I call this like a low rave kind of sound um, also in in uh, in the virus, not the virus, sorry, in inspire. Um, together, they all work in tandem. Actually, that one's just doing one note, you know, the whole way through, and that's just making the lead sound full. As you can see, when the drop comes, they're not there because the kick is doing the, the most of the work in, in, in the bottom end, well actually all the work, there's nothing else in the, in the bottom except the kick. I'm using Nimble Kick, it's a great plugin, I'll go into that uh, once we get through the leads. And actually I think that that's the leads, that's the leads including the, 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 the bass, that's all the synths.
So I think what we can do now is move on to the kick and the screech. So basically, all we've got here uh, is, this, is this screech here. And this was uh, a screech that we've made in, in the virus. Uh, I've just exported that down and it literally just one screech, which I've exported as one file. And then I've just cut it and edited it and then pitched it, you know, using, you know, see here I've transposed it by four over here, you can see. And I've just organized it in a way that had the most energy or that I felt was right for the track. In this case, it was this kind of and together with the side bass, it's like also because the track's in triplet, so it's it's got to follow what the bass line is doing as well. Um, I had some processing on there, as you can see, uh, just some distortion, nothing too crazy, um, a bit of EQ before distortion. Um, yeah, it's just really simple. It's always, you know, with distortion, it's always, it's never anything, anything crazy. Distortion is always going to be distortion. There's different types of distortion, like asymmetrical distortions and, you know, being able to change uh, the cycles uh, on the bottom separate to the top. Um, but at the end of the day, it's always going to be distortion. And there are different parameters which will give you slightly different sounds. But most of the time, a lot of the, 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 the main difference comes from what you do post and pre. Um, sorry, yeah, before and after the distortion. So in, in this case, I've added some EQing here before the distortion. Then there's some extra EQing after the distortion with some, you know, delays and some reverb. You know, back in the day, they would always tell us never put reverbs on your, uh, your, your, your main channel. Like if you're working on something, always make a send or an, an effect send and send it to the, 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 the reverb or the delay that you want to use, mainly because it saves processing power. But these days we've got really good computers. And uh, yeah, if you can, you know, have a, a delay and a reverb on a screech and then have a completely different reverb and delay on something else, you're actually cr creating different spaces for every sound, which is actually pretty, pretty good for the mix. So yeah, I mean, I can show you what it sounds without the processing. Still this kind of the same. This is filtered, of course. If I show you the automation, show or use the automation. Sorry, I've got to scroll back down. So over here, I've just got the, it's just filtering down. Then the filter opens back up. Just in time for the drop. So that's the screech, and uh, that's how it kind of works together with the kick bass. Um, this is the kick and side. Actually, I've got this little layer here, which is like uh, I've used it in side style now, also in the Mona Lisa remix. Um, it's bass. All it is is just the same screech that you're using, and I put it here, and then it's got like a, a reverb with a big pre delay on it. In this case, it got 250 ms. And then it's just being sidechained. So then it's got this like pumping effect coming going on in the background. Because you can hear the screech. And then like together with the bass. I don't know if you hear it um, in this section. So it just kind of has this pumping effect in the background, and I really, really like that. You can hear it in side style as well. But yes, that's the screech. Then we've got the intro kick and the side bass. I'm not going to go into detail how I made the side bass because this is the same um, side bass as Mona Lisa. I've pitched it down, and I've also cut it up and put it into uh, triplet because Mona Lisa uh, wasn't straight. So this is in triplet now, and I've had to pitch this up from uh, Mona Lisa, I think was in F, and I think here we're in 
Okay, we're in right now. We're in G right now. So I've had to pitch this layer up. And obviously you can see I've, I've glued it in because it wasn't as long. Because it was straight, if I you know, open this out, you can see this is the original Sybase, which is like... But the last one is, is pitching up because I've pitched it. And I've just done it in triplet. I think it's really important to be able to use your sounds repetitively, but not to the point where it sounds the same all the time. I think you need to mix things up. And in this case, you know, I've changed the punch of the kick and with this punch, which is basically um, changed the whole vibe of the kick and bass. And it sounds completely different now. So uh, if you listen to Mona Lisa, then you listen back to this one, you realize that it's, they actually sound different, not because I changed the bass, but actually because I changed the kick. And a lot of time you can have the same main kick, like your climax kick, and you can change the punch to something else and it'll sound like a completely different kick. So there's some little tips and some little tricks that you can do. Then I can move on to the actual main pitching kick, which is what I use for the drops. <laughs> and I was using, like I was mentioning earlier, a nimble kick. And I think this this kind of program has saved so much time in terms of pitching the, the kicks and pitching kicks used to always be such a nightmare. I used to hate it because it's like a lot of a lot of work. You know, you've got to sit there, cut the, you know, you've got to cut the tail and then pitch the tail and then, uh, you know, make sure that you've cut out the right position where it, where it works. And then you've got to do that for all the different notes. And then especially if you're doing a lot of edits and cuts and, Sometimes it can be so frustrating, but this you basically just get whatever kick you want you slap it into nimble You just drag and drop and away you go um, I can just show you with like another kick here like come on, I'll just load something uh, Let's let's just load this I'm just literally playing up the keyboard So it's really, really easy to use. You can also stretch the kick out. Make it shorter. So, I mean, I'm using this kick because I don't want to really solo this kick because if I solo this kick, then people can rip it online <laughs> and then you will have my brand new kick. But um, these are some old kicks that I'm showing you with. And you can see it pitches it really well. You can select the range to go 24. Um, so then you've got a, you have a big range to pitch the kicks. I really love this plugin, man. And it's just been a, a game changer for me um, in terms of pitching kicks. There was nothing really else on the kick, just some EQing. I don't know why I did it in two separate EQs. Um, but yeah, this has just got a low shelf. This is just bypassed, testing stuff there. And... Uh, yeah, boosting some of the, you know, low mids here and there. I will do a tutorial about, um, you know, making kick drums. I, I'm, there's so much out there anyway already. Um, I've done, I've done ones in the past, but what I'll do, I'll make an in-depth one on how I made the character for this kick. This one. And... And that way, I can show you guys how to do it in Cubase. I can show you how to use Destroyer. Um, it's a really, really cool distortion plugin. Um, it's basically kind of like an emulation of the Logic one. Um, if I load Destroyer, that's kind of what it looks like. And you can see you can you can play with the. This is like an asymmetrical distortion, so you can play with the the the, the bottom cycle separate to the left cycle, and you know however you adjust it will change the sound. But yeah, I'll go in through this in another project. If you want to see how I do the side bases, um, if you check, there should be a link in the description, which will take you to my side style tutorial uh, video. And in that video, I show you how I actually make the side style bases. Well, moving along, we can go to these these toms that I've got here. And basically what this is, it's a sampler, a sample library, sorry, in, in contact. 
It's a really, really cool one uh, by Heaviosity. It's got really tight, you know, low drums. Toms, there's some high ones in there as well. Um, I'm using the the low drums, which is like the toms and stuff. And it's also got some bass drums in there. You can see it's super like, super tight. And you know, together with the, with the kick bass, it just creates a kind of like rhythm. So not real much processing on there, just some EQing for it to fit the mix and uh, some some long reverb on there, just because there is a lot of space in between all of these and I want the reverb to carry through. It's all about space, I find it when, when mixing. I, I tend to use really long reverbs because I like that. I like to, to carry that space throughout the song and especially in the background um, and creating uh, an environment for every sound. And when you do that, then you're kind of, you're separating the things in the mix and everything has its own space. I forgot to talk about these uh, distortion effects kicks. So what I'm doing here, uh, well, first, I'll go through the first one, which is this one. I'm using an old plugin here, which is called Quadrifuzz. Now, uh, Steinberg stopped uh, supporting 32-bit uh, uh, plugins when they moved to to Cubase 10. I think they stopped it in nine. I can't remember. I think it was in nine that they stopped supporting 64-bit. Uh, and uh, I've just J-bridged the old one. And I really like this because this is, there's a particular preset in this called Chord Res, which a lot of um, hard style producers uh, have used in the past. And it's got a particular sound. You would have heard it in a lot of show tech tracks. And it's, it's, it's really, really, really cool. And that's the only reason why I love Quadrifuzz for this particular preset. I mean, I use it so much. Um, and I mean, yeah, before there's just some EQing um, just to, to get the sound to fit in the mix. Um, and then the second one is basically like the, the typical tone shifters distortion uh, effects kicks that I do. You can hear them. And I mean, together with like the kick, you can hear how it all works with the big drums. And you do it in between, kind of breaks up, breaks it up. And this is basically just a nine to nine, you know? Um, all that it's doing is um, I'm just pitching it up, five there, Four, so it's going. It's doing this pitching down thing. Dun, 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 dun. I could also put this in a sampler with the same channel strip that I have, and it'll work in the same way. And you could just play it on the keyboard. But I personally like to do it in audio because then I can um, control what happens to the audio a lot more. Uh, like for example, if I wanted to change this one up, I would like say pitch it. Uh, no, not reverse, sorry. Oh, I want to pitch it. Envelope. Yeah. All right. So what I'm going to do now, and like, I'm just, this is stuff that I normally do. I change like the beginning of it. I go up, say like, say 12. I'll do like something with the pitch bend and I'll, if you hear it. Whatever. And this... Will actually sound sound completely different to say this so it's like whatever you do to the sound in this channel strip it's going to sound different and it's going to sound uh you know unique or whatever and with the channel strip let me show you i've just got you know um some clip distortion here some trash there you can use any distortion like i was saying before it doesn't really matter what you do the main thing that's doing the work is this and what's happening is that there's the there's a peak that's uh moving in between the two distortions so and you can see how i've automated here the pitch kicks I've automated the the frequency to shift around. So 
what I'll do. I'll put this section on loop. And I'll move the frequency around. And that's kind of basically how I do those effects kicks. Yeah, and altogether they just they work pretty pretty nice, you know. It's it's all about creating um, different elements and keeping it interesting because you know if you take out all of these elements it kind of gets a little bit boring and and and, and repetitive just with the kick and, and, and the side bass you know but when you add these little things you know every four bars or every eight bars then it creates this interesting thing that's happening constantly you know it's constantly changing and evolving and music has to always be evolving and changing otherwise it can get quite boring and monotonous um, so yeah, I mean, that's the kicks. We can move on now. Um, I can hide this automation here to the percussion. Over here, I've got like some claps that I've laid together. Uh, just a couple 909s. Actually, this is also a 909, but just processed in a different way. Um, it's, I think it's, it's a sample that I, that I liked. That's them together. That's the first 909 second 99 and then this third layer that i like i like to call it like a festival clap it sounds like a crowd and all together you know normally you don't want to process it that much just with a 99 clap a bit of eq pre-distortion um you push it a little bit with camel fat and then some uh, equalizing to fit the mix later i put once again a reverb on the channel and probably the same with these ones except i didn't distort this one i used uh, an old eq on this no particular reason why and then yeah nothing really on that one i think i think i just automated the, the low frequencies i mean the high frequencies to yeah, I just automated the high frequencies to come up slowly. To be honest, you don't need to use three claps, but I tend I tend to want to layer things together just to create a new sound or a new feeling because um, it's fine to use you know your sounds over and over, but uh, try to keep it fresh. Like I was saying before with the side bass, um, if you're going to use the same bass or the same kick or whatever, try to use different elements, layer things together and try to keep it fresh sounding so that you're not doing the same tricks over and over again. When something becomes like, when you do something over and over again, like it's, there's, there's, there has to be some kind of a balance. Like for example, if you listen to a Kurt Black track, you know it's a Kurt Black track. Why? Because he has a particular way of doing his leads. He has a particular way of doing his kicks. So you know, okay, that's the Kurt Black lead sound. So that's the Kurt Black kick sound. That's whatever. you. That's what makes that sound. Same with atmospheres. Same with every artist. But the difference is in what I'm saying is try to keep things fresh. Try to keep doing things in a different different way. For example, this effects kick here that I was showing you before, that's a typical thing that I do. And it's become like a signature of mine. So that's why I keep repeating the same thing. I keep doing the same technique because that's an identifiable thing that I have for the tone shifter sound. But of course, I, I mix it up using like, for example, this quadrifaz effect kick thing. So when I, what it comes down to is just try to keep things as fresh as possible. And of course, if you have something that's very identifiable to your sound, then keep doing it. Then we can move on to like uh, the crash here. It's just like a drummerzone with drummerzone crash, which is basically a, a Roland 909 emulation synth. It's just a simple crash. It's got a little bit of processing on there. Nothing too crazy, just some EQing. Um, I think this is also a compressor, bionic delay. I don't really use this uh delay that much anymore but for this it was just like a channel strip that i had ready for crashes um this is another reverb that i use arts acoustic and then another compressor to because i like to bring up the reverb after the crash has actually 
been triggered. So once the crash is triggered, then the reverb slowly uh, comes up and stays prominent in the mix. But not too heavy, you know? There needs to be some kind of balance. And then that's just laid with another crash that we have. And then, yeah, some impacts over here. This is just a, ca a cashmere impact here, which I've got. It's got like some sweeps on top. Uh, normally, I, I used to make uh, my own kick bombs back in the day. This was one of them. I've just low passed um, the actual WAV file, so you just get the, the the low end, the low end push. Then the snares we've got over here. Now, in this particular track, I uh, I wanted to layer. Um, these two snares of mine with this particular snare, which I really love from uh, old Hedy and Brennan Hart track called uh, The Motherfucking Point of Perfection. It's just really snappy and I, I really like that snare. So I laid it in with um, my other snares here. These are kind of really typical hardstyle snares. Um, it's like a snare slightly with a slight clap laid in the mix. You know, all the guys back in the day used to use snares like this. Um, these are really famous in the hardstyle scene. You know, there's a lot of samples out there now that you can get um, and you can use. But I personally like to stick to like the hardstyle sounding ones for these kind of, you know, build up roles. You, you can use any other snare if you like. Like it's, there's, there's no rules. But if, I mean, for these particular things, I like to personally keep the the, the, the real hardstyle snare sounds. It's all together. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, I don't think I did that much processing. There's nothing on that one. There's just a little bit of EQing on this one just to fit the mix once again. And yeah, this is just uh, an inflator, which is basically just a limiter. Then that brings us to the effects at the end. This effect should be here, sorry, as well. Yeah, these are just some risers. You know, I can... It's just to create tension in the mix, basically. So... I mean, some of these I've made for myself. Some of these I've got from sample packs. This one in particular I made myself in Silent. Made this years ago, but I'm still using it now. Once again, because it's a signature sound to me. It's just basically an LFO thing. Maybe I can um, show you guys how to do uh, these kind of effects, these risers inside a synth. If that's something that's interesting to you, let me know in the comments and I can uh, I can show you guys how to do that. Um, and then this was just another crash layer. Actually, this should be up here with the crash stuff. Yeah. So yeah, as you can see, sometimes I've used the drummers on crash with this layer. Sometimes I haven't used the drummer, drummers on crash. And it's just how it feels in the mix, basically. If I feel like, oh, it's a little bit too much, I'll take it away. If I feel like, oh, it needs more, instead of turning up the, the crash layer, maybe I'll put another layer in there that's going to uh, do something different. That's the, the whole idea behind layers, anyway. And that's basically the project. Over here I've got my effect sends. These are the standard effects that I always use. You know, I always like to use Redline Reverb, uh, Arts Acoustic Reverb, uh, together with another reverb called Redline Reverb. I like to use a combination of long, uh, long reverbs, like this is like four seconds. This one is like five and a half seconds. This is Bionic Delay. Uh, like I said, I don't really use it that much anymore, but it's in some of my projects still and in some of my channel strips. So sometimes it does get loaded into my project, even if I'm not using it. Um, and this is another one, a little bit shorter, or just under four seconds, but with a huge pre-delay. Uh, some guys will be thinking like, hey, what the hell? Like, why would you have a pre-delay of 250 milliseconds? But for leads, what I find is, you know, if you have this like long reverb that's in the background, it creates this sense of space, this huge... Uh, 
sense of space for the leads and it really makes the leads, it gives them depth and it gives them character. Um, it brings them to life. And it's not too loud in the mix, but you know that combined with a shorter reverb and then your delays, then you start to build um, a particular space for those leads, creates a different dimension for it. And then on this last channel, I've got this. I'm not using it in this particular track. I don't, I believe I'm not if I check the drop. So I am. So what's happening in this layer? Uh, I've got this, once again, also a, uh, a long reverb. Uh, yeah, like four, almost four seconds. But then I've got like this Elephoto, which is basically a fake sidechain. Um, and it's just uh, creating like a pumping effect. Now it's very subtle in the mix. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Um, in this particular mix, I've used it very subtly. Like it's there, but if like if you take it out, then you might hear that it's gone. But when you put it back in, then it creates this like pumping effect in the mix, which is kind of nice for the leads. Um, you don't have to do it. It's just something I like to do sometimes, and it really depends on the mix. Sometimes it can be really distracting, and sometimes it works just right. So it's all about trial and error, and 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 finding the right the right sound. Apart from that. That's kind of everything in the, in the, in the project. Um, yeah, if, if you like me to show you guys anything else, write it in the comments, send me a message. And uh, yeah, I want to do more of these, these kind of tutorials and, uh, you know, share the kind of knowledge with you guys um, only because I think it's, it's fun to do. And also it's nice to share that knowledge with you. So, so yeah, take it easy. If there's any, like I said, if there's anything else you guys want me to do, let me know. I can show you. I will make a tutorial about how to make kicks in Cubase using Destroyer. And um, yeah, until the next video, take care and keep it real. Peace.